Hello and welcome. So uh, wonderful to see all of you. I was um, talking with Gay this morning and um, we were reflecting a little bit on how long we've known each other. And uh, one of the things he said to me is when he first met me, he, he had this thought that I was being underappreciated and that he made it his job to appreciate me so richly that I could feel it in every moment. That's, that's worked out really well, <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> but it, what it put me in mind of is what are, what they call in um, theater, what, what is your through line? And sometimes they call it the broomstick engine. And the reason they call it the broomstick engine is because in The Wizard of Oz, what drives the drama is the search for the broomstick. And so part of what people say in, um, in when they're practicing for theater is what's your, what's your organizing principle? What's the thing that you keep coming back to? We might call it commitment. What do you keep coming back to that you recommit to? What are you aligning to? And it just put me in mind of we, the context that most of us grow up in and are encouraged to be in as adults is a what's wrong orientation. So, and our brains are pretty wired to look for what's wrong so that we can respond effectively for survival to respond to what's wrong. And what I've noticed, and I'm imagining you've noticed it in your life also, is that the what's wrong habit keeps us from really moving into appreciation, it keeps us in our critical brain, it keeps us from moving into wonder, and it keeps us from creating solutions. So I'd like you to take a moment and give attention to your body and just wonder about, hmm, where is my what's wrong central? Where is the switchboard in me for what's wrong? So here's a couple of suggestions. I think that a lot of people carry what's wrong in their shoulders. Like, oh, what's wrong? And it's my fault or it's my burden and I've got to do something about it. Uh, so, um, and it could be all the way down your back. It could be um, feeling it in your legs or your feet. I realize that a lot of what I, where I feel the what's wrong is in my knees. The knees have so much to do with support and I didn't experience a lot of support early in my life growing up. So my orientation was always on, is there gonna be any support? Nobody's gonna support me, I have to support myself. So locate, even if you just, you know, whatever your body says, doesn't have to make any sense or be logical. And what I'd like you to do is to gather up some love scoops. So I'd like you to, Notice that around you, all of this energy, you can gather it up. And I'd actually like it to, you to gather it up. And then I'd like you to let it oh, rain over or land on or just sprinkle that what's wrong area in you. Oh. And then gathering up some more. Yeah, because I could really feel that. I felt that sort of tingling and streaming all the way down through my feet. So that one was a good one. So gathering up some more love. And then notice how would your body like to experience that? Would you like it to be like a spray or a mist or a big wave or a big, big old luscious embrace? Ah. <sighs> Beautiful, great. And then let yourself do that once more where you're gathering and gathering and gathering. And you can gather from underneath. And then how would your what's wrong place like to receive some energy? Ah, <sighs> when the message that I was getting from my what's wrong area was just simply just be here for a minute, just be here. Because so much of our what's wrong is organized around doing, 
if I could just do something different, then things wouldn't be wrong and then I would feel better. So I want to suggest something completely different to you, which is organizing yourself around appreciation, beauty, commitment to revealing more and more of your essence every day. So our basic, um, our basic intention is to expand our capacity every day to give and receive love. And what that tends to do also then is to reveal more essence. And it gives you an orientation that is a what's right orientation rather than what's wrong. So you're never gonna get rid of what's wrong, it's how your brain is organized. You know, to not this, not this, not this. And you, so you always have that. And that's kind of a default position. So if you go to your default, that's generally what will happen. But if you create, what's a, what's a gesture, a movement, a way of uh, maybe using the fear melters that can carry for you a signal, I'm shifting to what's right. I'm shifting to noticing what's right. Hmm. So I'm noticing me going, hmm. So hmm is a very quick and effective way to shift from what's wrong to what's right. So let yourself now create a hmm, hmm, through a whole out breath. Hmm, hmm, and play with the pitch the way that you let your breath through, letting that through your body, hmm, until you're actually feeling the hmm. So I found that it takes somewhere between three and six hmms. So that's three to six out breaths. So experiment for you where how many hmms does it take for you to feel that flow in your body, that sense of warmth and more streaming. Okay, and so go ahead and experiment with that. Don't just think about it. Go ahead and experiment with it right now. And from your hmm, I'd like you to take the quality of that. And I can feel that in my fingertips, the hmm. And so I'm going to apply that to my what's wrong area. Hmm, so I'm using sound and touch now and my attention. So that's the part that we often leave out, you know, so I'm doing something, I'm sort of going through the motions of something, but my attention is somewhere else. So if you bring your attention, your sound and your touch with a hmm, hmm, what I find is that immediately I can feel my whole physiology slowing down, kind of going more into a wave rather than jaggedy. Ah, so you can notice your body will give you feedback about when you've moved into the hmm space. And since that's not your default position, my sense is that you're invited to choose that over and over again, especially if you're feeling jangly. So for me, if I'm feeling jangly, I know that I've moved somehow into the what's wrong space. So I'd like you to now take the, you can combine love scoops, humming, attention, touch, and I'd like you to take the whole of that and send it out into the space that's around you so that you are spreading out with your hmm, with your presence. And you're spreading out into the space around you, past your reach space into the room where you are, Hmm, and you can renew that with a hmm, 
So I like to do a hmm with a little wiggle on the end of it. So the there may be a hmm with a sumo on the end of it. There may be a hmm that becomes oozy. <clears throat> so your fear melters can also be a source of nourishment for you, not just a correction. So the fear melters can make more space for giving and receiving more love. So you're spreading out here and then return back to, see my what's wrong space has really eased up. So now I'm gonna go looking for any place else in my body that wants that hmm, attention, touch together. Hmm, attention, touch. So let yourself hmm while wa wondering hmm, where else in my body would like my loving attention. Mm, so what comes to me from me immediately is the space right above my sacrum. It's right, right below my waist. It's the area where I'm, I'm often sort of uh, trying to hero the whole world from my sacrum. It's a hard job. And so my sacrum gets tired. So. I'm going to do some hmm and love scoops and hmm. And I can feel the hmm moving all the way down my back. And I can feel my hands rather often when we touch ourselves, it's with a what's wrong. Okay, what's wrong now? Come on, get over it, you know, shape up, you know, pokey pointy. And I could feel my hands going, oh, honey, oh. Oh, so notice if your hands or your arms or your whole body can carry that, hmm, hmm, which is curiosity and wonder and appreciation. And you bring your attention and your touch all to the same place. It's like, when in the day do we ever do that? We're always just sort of in action and always on to the next thing. So part of our loops and scoops is to richly fill your reservoir. And I want you to alternate between giving that to you and then letting the overflow spread out into the space around you. And see if you'd be willing to develop a what's right habit, a looking for what's working, where's the flow, where's the opening. We teach a whole course, which we may do again next year, a creativity camp, where a large part of what we're doing is favoring the opening. And that becomes possible when you're looking for what's right. And the great power of bringing your attention, your touch, your movement, your sound, all to the same place is very much a, a grounding, a sense of, of embodying your presence. So let yourself just take a little body scan now and notice the amount of flow that you have in your body, the way that the flow is moving through you. Mm. I can feel more openness to the space around me and a connection to me. So just take 30 seconds or so to notice the connection between the outsides and your insides and see if you've established a little bit of a flow, a pathway to feeling connected inside and outside of you. Mm -hmm. And see if you would be willing to return to this practice whenever you start feeling yourself drifting off from ease and flow and the celebration of, hmm, where can I 
give and receive more love today. Mm. So I'm going to unmute so that you can make me sounds to each other if you would like. Mm. And feel free to unmute yourself and mm. Ah, mm. Okay, thank you for being with us. Mm. And mm, I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.